So to start off with, I would like to first ask you that, you know, you've been leading the Learning and Organization Roundtable and the Women Leadership Forum for Asia. So if you could just give us a little bit of perspective on how do you actually see diversity and inclusion evolving in Indian organizations? All right, so that's quite a really vast response, but let me just start by telling you that um, diversity and inclusion, uh, you know, in Indian organizations is more like a 10 year old, year old story. So we're talking about a decade of work, uh, largely many organizations still waking up to this, don't quite get what this agenda is really all about. Um, there's a lot of keeping up with the Jones. There's also uh, some sense of wanting to sort of ride this bandwagon because everyone else seems to be sort of doing it. And then there are organizations that are really evolved. The few, uh, too few and, and far between, but there are organizations that are evolved in this journey and are, are doing some really stellar work in this space. I wish there were more. So I'm going to start by saying my response to your question is that I think Indian organizations are still discovering what diversity and inclusion really is. Sometimes this is a board led agenda, especially where um, boards are, are perhaps, uh, you know, trying to drive the United Nations sustainability agenda for the organization. So it can be board led uh, more often than not. It's HR led, um, in which case, more, you know, you see more of programs and events than real sort of strategic, um, you know, change management or strategic culture building, which is really what uh, the entire diversity and inclusion movement is really all about. But it falls on HR's lap because it is about equal opportunities. It's about being able to bring in diverse talent into the organization. And because HR oversees the talent acquisition uh, function, it's not uncommon for this to be able to fall on yeah. HR's lap. Um, it, the, the responsibility is sometimes uh, distributed. so. Oftentimes, it's not only HR that's that's leading this. A few few people from the line who also come in to be able to contribute to this agenda because it ought to rightly be driven as a business agenda rather than as an HR agenda. But notwithstanding that, again, the way in which this agenda is sort of perhaps um, distributed within the organization, uh, I think the basis of distributing it is typically more to do with passion rather than the competence, understanding, learning experience mm -hmm. or the exposure to be able to drive something as serious as diversity and inclusion inside the organization. Uh, more often than not, uh, you know, this is also driven because everyone else is doing it. So it's more of keeping up with the Jones. So in which case it often lapses into events and programs and celebrating Women's Day and the rest of that, which is all wonderful. It's just wonderful. Uh, I think it's a great place to start. Yeah, any work is a great place to start. Yeah. Uh, but oftentimes we believe that itself is the agenda. Or mm. hiring diverse talent, yeah. which typically just starts with the low hanging fruit, which is uh, you do have a talent pool of women who are educated and available. And so if you hire a couple of women into the organization, a lot of organizations believe that they do have a diversity and inclusion yeah. uh, agenda. So actually diversity and inclusion agenda starts with uh, bringing in uh, diverse talent. It doesn't end with bringing in diverse talent. And I think that's where there's a bit of a uh, disconnect. Wow. So I think that, um, you know, I'll, I'll, I'll close this uh, response because we do want to talk more uh, by simply yeah. saying that more often than not, um, this agenda is, um, is taken seriously, if, uh, particularly for the MNCs, if it is headquarter driven, where I must mm -hmm. say there is a um, huge interest in wanting to drive equal opportunities given the rest of the statistics around diversity and inclusion within our country. I mean, we rank 140th out of 156 <laughs> countries in the World Economic Forum gender gap yeah. Uh, index. Yeah. Um, so on most yeah. parameters, we're really not doing uh, too greatly. I've got something else here, which is essentially 151 out mm -hmm. of 156 countries on economic uh, participation and opportunity. Participation. So, you know, there are many mm -hmm. parameters of this. We're really falling short. And so there is huge hope, yeah. uh, especially for multinational organizations to want mm -hmm. to drive this here so that you actually yeah. fulfill the equal opportunities agenda and you allow mm -hmm. for, uh, you know, organizations to truly live this value proposition of giving diverse uh, groups and opportunities yeah. so that you may uh, have diverse uh, lenses to problem solving. You have more of sort of creative problem solving with the organization, more chances mm -hmm. for innovation, uh, more chances for engagement, yeah. 
possible chances for retention. And I think those are the uh, very sort of global agendas most organizations are driving. Uh, they, they can be board led, in which case they're also taken more seriously. Uh, sometimes if it's uh, only HR led, um, you know, it can easily lapse into events and programs. Yeah. And uh, and then, like I said, there are HR teams and yeah. diversity and inclusion teams, which are doing an absolutely brilliant job. But in short, long way to go, really long way to go. Long way to go. Very compliance driven rather than culture driven in the way in which we look at this agenda.